Welcome to Eye Contact. I am Miguel Teus. 3D heads-up displays and digital microscopes could change the cataract operating suite in major ways. Today, we are joined by Dr. Basilius Diakonis and Dr. Brian Little to debate the pros and cons of the new technology. Welcome, doctors. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Dr. Diakonis, you've had some experience using this technology. How do you perform surgery with this setup and how is it different? What are the potential, the potential advantages? Very good. Um, I was a fellow in Bascom where we had a research project and I had to visit another clinic to collect data for femtosecond cataract assisted surgery. And I went to the Eye Institute of West Florida where Dr. Weinstock was only using that as a fellow. I was blown away. It's a new technology, very futur futuristic. And for a young person, that was very interesting. After my fellowship, it happened that I started working in that place. Every transition, especially for a young ophthalmologist, even if it's from an operating room to another, it's hard at the beginning. But with the help of Dr. Weinstock, I think it took a few sessions and I adjusted pretty quick. Overall, I would say that it changes the way you do surgery. Some examples may be uh, the fact that you're sitting back in a more comfortable position. Mm -hmm. That means that the strain on your body is significantly less. The magnification you can achieve on an OLED screen is very high without you getting copiopia or asthenopia. And uh, the screen is a few feet away from you and you can magnify the eye to a tremendous extent. And the other benefit, I believe, is that you have a better perception of the room around you because you're not stuck in front of the ocular. The position for me is more important. And if I can give an example, it's like driving a stick shift car where all of your extremities are working at the same mm -hmm. time. But imagine driving a car and you having to see through a specific point through the windshield. That means that your body may acquire a not a very good position. With this, your back is like you're driving the car. It's relaxed and back. So I believe overall it's a more relaxing surgery. Okay. Okay. Dr. Little, please talk about your experience uh, with the technology in your workplace. Thank you. Yes, um, I was first exposed to this um, when it was owned by True Vision in its infancy some years ago. And it's been very interesting seeing the technology evolve because in its infancy, it wasn't very good. There were delays, there was a latency between what you were looking at on the screen and what was happening under the microscope. The resolution wasn't so high, etc. And I had serious doubts about it as a potentially useful technology at that stage. But then we cut sort of five years down the line and I used it first at um, Moorfields Eye Hospital where I was working um, and in its current form as the Ingenuity. And I was absolutely impressed with it because it had come on leaps and bounds since I'd first seen it. And not having seen it for so long, I approached it quite skeptically. Mm -hmm. um, but when I sat down and I switched it on and I tried it out, I realized that it had been transformed the technology from the latency had gone it was absolutely minimal to the point that it's unrecognizable the resolution had improved and as Dr. Diagnos was uh, explaining I think your, your position in, in uh, being much more aware of what's going on in your surroundings and you've got to remember that everybody else in the, in the operating mm -hmm. theater gets exactly the same view as you they don't get a version of it through a screen a two-dimensional screen and they can see it with the same resolution as you can, the same clarity. So as a teaching tool, which is what I'm involved with a lot, um, it is second to none. It is absolutely fantastic for that point of view. Very good. Dr. Diakonis, uh, cost and, and training are certainly issues to consider. How can we get best value from this, te from this technology? The cost is, of course, an issue, and you have to think on how you value that and how you do the numbers. To me, if you think about a surgeon that's very busy doing cataract surgery, extending their career one, two, or three years because of work-related disabilities that you may have mm -hmm. from the oculars, immediately you have a tremendous value. Training also is very important because you can have your fellows or your, your residents, even the staff that you work with, or even um, industry or patients that can have live seminars. They can perceive the surgery in 3D and you can explain to them what you're doing and what the benefit of the surgery is. So overall in training and 
the value, I believe it adds to your, uh, to your practice. It, it, it has to do with how you see an investment mm -hmm. and how you take the value back. Obviously, obviously. Dr. Little, some ophthalmologists may be wary about uh, using 3D in the operating theater. What would you say to them? I would say to them, don't be frightened of it. Um, <laughs> you know, embrace it and try it. And I think, I think that the first-hand experience, there's nothing more persuasive than actually using it because I was skeptical about it myself, um, having used it originally. And then in its current um, iteration, and the, the level of resolution that it gives and the definition and the accessibility for everybody else around you, I think it is a significant uh, improvement, in fact. And I'm surprised to hear myself say that. It positively enhances your experience of the surgery. Um, and I think from that point of view, don't be scared of it, but do try it first. And if you have the opportunity mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to try it in a dry lab or a wet lab scenario, just to get used to it, because there is a certain amount of, of a, but only a small learning curve yeah, yeah. and adaptation that's required. But I think that uh, most people would fairly instantly um, grow to like it. Very interesting. And finally, Dr. Diakonis, are there any limits to this technology or can we look forward to more exciting advances in the years ahead? Dr. Little mentioned something extremely important, which is the latency issue. A lot of doctors have that perception. The time that I started using this technology, I had zero uh, latency. I mean, I could not recognize anything different. And that has to do with the evolution of the OLED screens and the, and the cameras. Today, I believe this technology does not have this problem. And anterior segment surgeons come second in this. People mm -hmm. who are really using this are VR surgeons, and this, uh, this subspecialty requires way better and enhanced visualization. So if VR surgeons are using it, I believe the anterior segment surgeons are going to use it uh, much easier today. Concerning the future, I would say that imagine your optical microscope, you can control the intensity of the light and the diaphragm. With this, you may enhance your image digitally with the gain or the contrast and the brightness of the image. So I believe that the overall experience of the view will be better in the future. Telemedicine can be an issue here, uh, and education. Very good, very good. And your views on the future, Dr. Little? Um, I think it's very bright. I think the future is very bright for it because I think it adds um, a level of enhancement that previously wouldn't be possible. And I particularly think as an educational and training tool, um, it's difficult to imagine anything better in the operating room. Um, and as uh, Dr. Diakonis was saying, the, the VR surgeons who, for whom it was originally designed, and I think we are, we are the unintended beneficiaries <laughs> as the anterior segment surgeons of this technology. Very good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. For more information, please visit us at eurotimes.org.